my safety glass after this. Before I get on with the video, this is the arm from the Flowrite Special Edition that uh, Underground FTV are, are making, and or at least what I'm hoping they're going to put in the kit. And I'm going to break this, and I think it, it's going to be way harder to break. But I'm going to break. I'm going to attempt to break this. Oh my God! Come on! Come on! Come on! Well, I finally broke it. So here's what I actually want to talk about, and this is really just a pet peeve of mine. So I'll talk about carbon in a video or somewhere on, on Facebook or something, and somebody without exception will comment and say, hey, the top and bottom, including other big name frame makers, they say, hey, don't you know that the top and bottom layers are just cosmetic and you can't really tell what's going on inside the carbon? To which I say, yeah, I know that, but it's also indicative of what's happening with the carbon if there's nothing special happening with the carbon inside. So it's really a pet peeve of mine and it's really annoying to hear because it really does make a massive difference how you orient the carbon in your frame. So let's look at these carbon layers and the carbon weaves and all this stuff in general. So I'm not going to go over a lot of carbon, just going to go over real basics of, you know, the structure because a lot of this stuff is China grade carbon and you really, China will say it's like this and like that, but in reality you have no idea what you're getting. You just have to test the products and I have done testing of so many Chinese products, it's just ridiculous. Looking for ones that are special, different, you know, anything improved. Okay, so the top and bottom layers are absolutely cosmetic, but unless there is something special specified to happen with the carbon layers inside, you can use the top and bottom layers to figure out which way the carbon fibers are oriented and how the thing was cut and you know where it was placed on the sheet. So look at these two arms. These are two, this is a, a very, very early uh, Baby Hawk R prototype arm with my, which my manufacturer cut one sheet incorrectly. And so when you look at these two arms, it's hard to see in this stupid light, but if you look at these two arms, you can see that the carbon fiber of the top arm looks different than the bottom arm. So take a close look at this. It's very easy to see. A lot of people have a hard time seeing this, but I'm going to point this out to you and it should be really obvious to you. Look at the bottom arm. You see zigzags, you know, crosses going down the arm. You see this row of crosses going down the arm. Whereas on the top, you see nice linear lines going down the arm. And I'm going to back up for a second real quick and say there is a difference between twill and uh, regular weave. These are both twill weave, but as we discussed, the top and bottom layers are the only layers that are like that and are cosmetic. Inside, it's different, and I'll get more of that later on. And way early on, there was a big discussion of which one is actually stronger. And it's not, when you hold them in your hand and you compare them, it is not even a comparison. So on this arm, the carbon is crossed going down the arm. And what that means is that the carbon fibers are very short. They are short, 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 which means that there is resin holding the carbon fibers together and you are relying on the resin to give your arm strength. So if I bend this arm, look at that. Look at this. Look at the flex in this arm. I'm not really putting a lot of force. It even stays flexed. It, I've already delaminated all the sheets in the arm. So look at that flex. That's crazy. It's a lot of flex. If you compare it to the, the arm that was properly cut with the carbon fibers going directly down the arm, I cannot, I can, here, I'm going to break this to show you that I can't like it's, it's much, much, much stronger. It's exponentially stronger. It's not even beginning to be a comparison. Look at that. That was very hard to break. Now let's break 
the arm that is incorrect. And I'm not using the bent arm, which I've already delaminated. Look, it's just going to bend. I'm, I'm putting almost no... Pr look, it's just the, the, the tool itself is bending it. I'm not even trying. And it won't even break because it's just so flexible because of all the resin in it. That is not what you want. That is not a good arm. It's terrible. You don't want an arm like this. It's just going to delaminate and crack and break and not work for you very well. Now, another thing I forgot to mention, which I do not have a good example of in this video, is that there is another type of carbon or another way or multiple ways to design the layering inside the carbon fiber layers. And if I haven't said it before, the carbon fiber, this is linear carbon fiber and it's pre-pregnated sheets. So what that means is that every layer in this carbon, if you look at the side of your, of your carbon fiber, it looks like you got a bunch of lines. And those are literally the sheets that they have laminated together. And they come in a sheet. You, or they roll it out, stick them, like slap them together, and then cook them for a while with the top and bottom plates, uh, with the top and bottom pretty plates, depending on whatever you ask them for. So you can either get the 0, 090 direction, which is like we discussed, this cross hatchy kind of direction where it goes directly this way and directly this way. And every single, every other sheet, every alternating sheet is either like this or like this. Or you can get various other layups, which the other most popular one is 45 degree, throwing in a 45 degree sheet in the middle of all of those other sheet and sheets. And what that means is you've got one layer like this, one layer like this, one layer like this, and then it goes back one layer like this, one layer like this. And now what that does is it gives the frame overall more stiffness, but you're sacrificing some of your carbon fiber layers to give strength to the 45 degree direction. Whereas if you just used 0, 090 carbon fiber, you could make take advantage of how many carbon fibers you have running in these two directions and only cut your frames such that your arms go directly down those carbon fiber lanes and your arms are 90 degrees to each other and everything is very strong and very durable. That's why that's why the Floss 2.1, or where is the Floss 2.1? That's why the Floss 2.1 looks the way it does. So I broke all these frames to show you kind of sort of how I test frames here and there. And I'm gonna go over them real quick. This was the uh, Hyperlite Evo from uh, a while ago. It was a multi-GP spec frame. It's in three millimeters and you can see the carbon is running correctly down the arms and you can see the nice linear sheets inside when I broke it. I was surprised by how weak this was. I haven't broken this frame in a long time. I haven't tested it in a long time. But I, I was surprised. I was expecting it to kind of outshine some of my new designs, but so, but thankfully it didn't. Um, I was surprised how easy this frame actually was to break in three millimeter. Let's look at this. Is the Floss two six inch, and this arm initially broke here at the motor mount, which is a very common place for all these carbon things to break because it's very hard to make this this segment of the frame very durable because it requires a lot of carbon bulk the 90 degree joint that's made by the motor mounting onto the arm and then getting hit at the end of the motor bell is such an extreme joint you feel so much stress at that joint that it's so hard to so so hard to strengthen that joint and it's not worth adding all that carbon bulk and a lot of the times that's not even how the frame breaks and that's not how it feels the force. The frame kind of rotates in free space as it gets hit. So I count for all that when I design my frames. Thankfully, as I broke this frame, it did not only break at the um, center screw hub, which is often where it breaks. This is kind of, this is one of the newer arms. It's the four millimeter version. And um, yeah, let's talk about the next frame. This is the Diatone GTR frame, which I previously discussed in another video. And I said that, well, they cut the bottom plate incorrectly. This is one example of incorrect. And I didn't include any other company's frames in this video because I did not want to upset the company or the fanboys of that company. But since this is technically a very close to floss frame, I decided to include it. And I predicted that this are the, the main plate and the top plate would break because of how the carbon fibers were oriented on the bottom sheet and generally how thin they made it and the fact that the arm is four millimeters and the bottom plate is three millimeters and there's really nothing on top holding it on and that's exactly what happened when i flex this flex the the frame it did crack directly there and a lot of people might think that i'm trying to falsify this information like i'm not i don't care to falsify anything i i 
promise you <laughs> I did this you know straight up I'm just gonna leave it at that so the arm it definitely broke here right at the motor mount which is the common place to break the arm even when I twisted it it was still bending the entire main body frame <clears throat> but eventually I got the arm to break somewhere in the middle and as you can see that they are using once again linear fibers Ugh, which I'm gonna kill myself my fingers by trying to show you I'm not even going to bother with this, but they're using linear fibers. You can tell by the orientation of the fibers right here. Let's keep moving down the line. This is the Floss 2.1 with, I believe, the 4 millimeter arms. Yeah, this is the 4 millimeter arm 2.1. This was significantly stronger than the Floss 2 with the independent arm, so I'm really happy about that. And I broke it a cup. I've broken this many, many times, and thankfully, it does not break at that center joint. Of course, it's not impossible to break it at this uh, screw joint, but it breaks somewhere down the arm or at the motor mounting pad, which is what I want. And you can see that I have changed the orientation of the bottom plate of this frame versus the Floss 2 because I no longer need the this, this strength in this joint area because the arms now take all the force because they're connected. Whereas on the Floss 2, I needed the strength right here in this joint. So that's why the carbon fiber is cross-hatched to give the uh, durability over here. I really just threw in the uh, Hyper Babies for fun. I already knew it was going to break there, but when it's actually built with the top plate, it doesn't break so easily there. This is the 3mm version and the 4mm version, which we have like a thousand of, which was cut by accident. This is the Flow Ride, which was sh shockingly strong <laughs> compared to the other ones. It wasn't as strong as this one, which I'll talk, to, I'll talk about in a second, but it broke as expected very nicely, and you can very clearly see the sheets inside, and they are linear which is what was specified. This is the five millimeter floss 2.1, which was by far the hardest frame to break. <laughs> and it took all my strength and I had to change tools twice. Um, I have broken it in the past. Usually when I break frames, I put it up against the curb and I just step on it. But this time I actually use the forceps. I, I use them, uh, the, the pliers. I, I do use that sometimes, but I haven't used it on the five millimeter carbon because I didn't expect to be able to break it by hand. Now, as a couple more examples of this cross hatching and whatnot, I'll show you. This is the torrent frame, the main body of the torrent. And one of my, the, first, the second I saw it, my primary complaint was, well, you guys cut the damn carbon wrong. And they said, we understand we did that because it was, it was, we could get higher yield of carbon fiber plates and it would be cheaper overall. And that makes sense but it does weaken the arms quite a bit. But their argument was, well, the thing is so light that you're probably unlikely to bend or break the arms anyways, which I agree with, but I'm gonna snap this arm for you right now. Uh, oh, gosh, <laughs> so it doesn't even break because it's, there's so much resin in there, it doesn't actually break. But you can clearly see that I have delaminated the sheets and it is definitely not using the, uh, uh, here, finally I broke it. It's definitely not using the 4545 quasi isotropic kind of carbon because it does cost more and that's that these are tiny whoop uh braces and even this size this is one millimeter thin exhibits the same effect look at this this is the linear carbon and if i flex that it's nice and stiff but if i flex this is a shorter span so it should be harder to flex and this is cut incorrectly you see the cross hatching going down the down the sheet is incorrect and I'm going to flex this. Okay, look at that. I'm, I'm not putting any pressure on this. Crack. And you can see, if it's focused properly, you can see right there, right there, the direction of the carbon fibers going down the arm. Lastly, these are two uh, prototype bottom plates for my flow ride or the, the brace plates. I switched to the linear plate to give the frame more stiffness in the center section, which I wanted. I never wanted to have, I never wanted to worry about breaking the plates where my, my electronic stack was held. So I switched to the linear design, but this one was cut differently because I thought that the arms would need more stiffness. So I gave this, the strength to the arm, but then later when I broke it and tested things, I realized that it does not need that. So I went back to the other version, but I'm going to flex these, these both for you. And you can see clearly that. I can probably, yeah, I can break this in my hand, but this is the incorrectly cut carbon version or what I've previously discussed, the crisscross cut down the section of stress. And now when I cut, when I try to flex this one, it's just going to hurt my hands because the carbon is so strong and even two millimeter, it's not, I can't, I cannot even flex it. I can't, hey, Jesus, two millimeter carbon is this strong, two millimeters.
And that's why when I made my toothpick, I originally made it in 1.5 millimeters because it doesn't really need any more. But I know that people will kind of scoff at 1.5 millimeters because they'll, they'll think it's, oh, it's so thin and so frail and fragile. So that it's gonna, it's gonna come out probably in two millimeters. And the arms are very thin and the carbon is cut. You can look, you can see the arms are all 90 degrees to each other. And when I flex it, the arms are super strong. And if I do bend it, if I do break it, which I'll actually break it for you here as well, I bet it will break right around here. I actually haven't broken this frame very much because it's such a tiny frame, I don't really need to. I already know how it's gonna break. But here you go. Oy. There you go, exactly as expected. Right there, right in the center section. Okay, that's it. I hope it was helpful. And oh, last but not least, <laughs> I forgot to discuss this. Okay, so I didn't want to get into the various other formats of carbon and, and how they are made. But if you look at the side of this arm compared to this arm on here, you can kind of see that the bottom arm has these kind of waves in it, whereas the top arm is all flat and straight. It's all got lines in it. What, this, what these waves indicate is that the entire arm is made of this woven top layer sheet. So the entire arm is made of fabric and the manufacturing of the arm is just totally different. And they actually added the um, woven sheets of Kevlar on top as well. Now this kind of sheet of carbon is way harder to, to cut. It's just a pain to cut but it gives you i'm not even gonna go into it just just take a look at this the way it breaks it does not break in the same way it breaks more like a uh, ceramic because it's so damn strong and it's much 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 harder to break in general i'm just gonna i'm just gonna leave it at that because i could just talk forever don't forget to floss i hope this was helpful for all you guys that make your own frames